Let me show you an email tool that you didn't know you needed until you watched this video. We're going to review email meter and it's on a lifetime deal right now. So let's go check it out right now. What's up everyone. So I want to show you email meter and it can provide you analytics for your Gmail and Outlook. It's going to provide you email sent, email received, average response time, busiest hours, and it's especially really good tool when you add your team members, because you're going to know how they stack with one and another, like how many emails have they received? How many did they send out? Are they lacking in some sections? Are they just slacking? Well, this is going to help you analyze that. So it's email meter. And if you want to check out the lifetime deal, the link will be in the description. And the deal is this one right now. So if you grab tier one, it's going to be tied to the pro version. And if you grab tier two, it's going to be tied to the team's plan. So it's really important that you know that. And these are the license tier options. So license tier one doesn't have the team features because it's only for one email box. So if you want to know your average response time, your email sent out and all that, because you want to know if your business is kind of slacking around, maybe you're not getting a lot of attention. Well, you're going to see this because you're going to see the average that you had this month or last week or two months ago, and you're going to know that you're doing well or not. Okay. But if you want to use this for team members, jump into license year two or three. The great thing about this is that you can analyze how each one of them is comparing. For example, if they are sending out a lot of emails and two of them are not, well, something is going on because they should be on par of what the emails are sent out should be, right? So it gives you an example of what you can do with that. Plus, you got team performance reports, individual members reports and manage access. So let's jump over to my dashboard. Now, one thing that you need to know about email meter is that it's not going to read your emails. It's just basing your receive sent out average response time and those kind of analytics, but it doesn't have to do with reading your private data. Okay. So first off, you got your main information here on the dashboard for reports. First, I recommend that you set up your time zone and certain things that I'll show you at the end. But for now, let's stick with the main section right here. So first off, this is my email that's connected and I'm going to set it to 30 days. Okay. So these are my messages sent recipients. So people who send me email, average response time, 13 hours and 33 minutes, message received and the senders. So 509 senders, my busiest hours, my busiest hours for sent and received. So you can see the graph right here where I have the most busiest hours. So it's like 7 a.m. to 11 p.m. So you can see it's kind of roughly there. And when it comes to the received, it's around 6 a.m. to 2 p.m. Right. So you, you get the idea. And the idea is that maybe you have to tweak maybe your average hours where you're working or you are responding to these emails. So it helps you analyze that, especially for team members. Maybe you want to change their hours where they work because they need to be on par with the messages received and the sent out. Maybe have them in the same time zone, for example. A uh, message is sent by graph and the received by graph time response, first time response time trends. And you got a lot of information here. For example, emails replied, sent breakdown, received a breakdown. So direct messages, CCs and others. And then we have a list of the emails that received and sent out. For example, I received emails from this one, but I didn't send out any emails. Why? Because this is a notification email. So I get notified when someone opens up my email. So it's an email tracker. So what I have to do? Well, I have to grab this email and add it to the filter so it doesn't add it here in this section. That way I'm not analyzing data that is not important to me because obviously I'm not going to send out an email to a notification or a no response email. I'm not going to send out emails to them. So we should filter those out. So here's the sent messages. You can see here 10 for this person. So I received 10, 18 for the integrate interaction and 10 for the sent messages, received messages and the best response time 8 a.m. My response time is one day, one day in eight hours. So I take more than a day to respond to this person. And you're going to get this average for all the emails. For example, this one is five hours response time. This one is two hours, 21 hours, etc. And it helps you analyze what you are doing with your email. Now, like I said, this is great for analyzing your own email. But if you want to analyze what your team members are doing, this is fantastic. And you, you can juice this lifetime deal a whole lot. All right, because just being aware of what they're doing is really important because you're going to be able to tell them, hey, you need to pick it up because your other team member is sending out 200 emails a day and you're sending out 20. Something is going on. What's up? And it's going to help you with that. All right. For the filters, you're going to use them right here. So, for example, I can filter out with the advanced filter 
and I can say for a certain email address, if it's a recipient, well, I'll say from and is, well, is not. And then I add, I add my emails here. So for example, I'm going to add this one, which is an email tracker. I don't need that information. So if I add it there, it's going to deduct it from the emails received, sent out and all that good stuff. Plus, I need to set up here the days that I want this to give me the analytics for. And it's going to remove it from the list and all the data right here, which is a good thing because, for example, notifications for mail track, I don't need to know how many I received and how much I took to respond to them and, and something that I don't respond to. So I don't need that in my analytics. So you can filter it out. Plus, you can export this in CSV. Now, when it comes to team members, like I said, we're able to average what they are doing with what I am doing. For example, I added my other email here. You can see in this case, I have a 91% for received messages, sent out messages, 99% response rate, 100 and 100% negative for the other email because I don't use it for certain things. But you're going to have an idea here when you have your all your team members to see what they are doing, how many messages did they receive, how many they sent out, are they working or they're not working. So this is going to give you those analytics there and you can export these for the whole team members, individual team members, etc. right? Then you have benchmarks and in benchmarks, we're able to view what's going on again, you, your team member and the average response time by industry. You can have it here. For example, messages received, messages sent, the average response times for your industry. So it's telling me that team average. So it's super low. I, it doesn't even show up there because the average response time for my industry is 2021 emails a month. So I'm really down to what should be the average, which I think is kind of crazy, but that's what it's telling me right here. And then your role companies of similar size, what's going on with them. And you got the average response time there. So it helps you kind of get the idea of where you stand in your company against other companies in this industry. Now you can select the industry over here in settings and in settings, we have the options. For example, first off, set your, your time zone, which is super important monthly report if you want to get that or weekly. Then we have the benchmarks. So here we have the information of who am I, what my company does and the industry that I'm competing with computer software. There's nothing for SaaS or WordPress. So I selected this one and then my company size. So I select this one and it's going to give me the average benchmarks based on that. And then I have the ad adjust options. So for example, these are my working days and this the idea of setting this is that you get your average and your analytics based on working hours and not on long working hours. And you can also exclude automated emails from here by setting this on. By default, these two are off. So do set them up when you get email meter. Now, if you plan to graph email meter, there's a 60 day money back guarantee. So if you don't like it or you don't find value in it, just go ahead and refund it. But if you ask me, it's a great tool if you really plan to analyze your analytics and obviously see how you're performing this month again, last month, etc., and how you're going to perform in the future, because maybe you're going to receive less messages from proposals and you don't notice it until you use something like this and you need to pick it up if that's happening. All right. So there you go. That is email meter. It's a lifetime deal. And if you want to grab it, the link we provided in the description and that's a wrap.